Hello and welcome to The Long View. I'm John Jordan. Today we're playing the Walking Dead March to War game, obviously based on the Walking Dead license, in this case the graphic novel, not the TV series. It's uh, currently in soft launch testing in uh, the Netherlands, Ireland, Norway and South Africa, although it has been available on other app stores during its soft launch process. Um, coming out fairly soon we think. And it is a kind of 4x game, but I'm calling it a 4x plus game. So let's go in um, and see uh, why we think it's a 4x kind of plus game. A little bit different to games like Game of War. So what we're looking at now is the kind of the main environment screen. So we can see my base there in green. Oh, not at the moment because it's just been covered up. And there's these resource caches you can go off obviously into the environment and collect these resources. I mean, you'll also see other players in there. So other, I ha I've been playing this game for quite a while, so I'm level 8. Um, other people are lower levels and then they have these walkers so obviously um, these these zombies where you can go and attack them so that's the environment this is the base so 4x games always have a very strong base building element and it's very much based around leveling up your different buildings which give you different attributes different resources and everything's very time based so it looks a bit different it's not like these from a game of war or a final fantasy 15 it's not kind of graphically uh, not very impressive in a way, but the kind of graphical layout is much more like a, a blueprint. You just see here I'm going through um, a resource collection process. I'm just collecting um, salvage and food. Um, so there are other elements as well, council chambers, headquarters. Now, this is kind of the important bit. This is where the game is, I think it's 4X+. Plus. So this is based around survivors. So you have actually two sorts of characters in this game. 4X games tend not to have a lot of characterization in them at all in terms of the gameplay. Um, they tend to be much more based around you. You build, you train units and armies, and they're very kind of throwaway. This game, and particularly the developer Disruptor Beam, has a lot of history of making narrative-based games. So it's done a Star Trek game, for example. It's worked with a lot of IP. So these kind of uh, survivors, um, they are kind of disposable and kind of not disposable. So you can see I'm healing some of them. So there's Naomi. <clears throat> she's got no health at all. So you can see she's critically wounded. Um, they all went off and did a battle, um, and a whole bunch of them got wounded. Um, and this game actually has permadeath, so if you don't um, heal them in time, uh, they will die. And that's not terrible, because they're generic characters, um, but they are a resource. So you spent a lot of time, so Ra Raul is level 14, I've leveled him up. Um, I spent time and resources doing that, I don't really want him to die. So um, there is this kind of nice element <coughs> where you want to keep these guys alive. Obviously a nice retention element because it keeps coming back into the game to heal them. Um, and obviously there's training as well, so you can see there um, Greta is um, a kind of newer character I've got. Only level 5, so I need to train her up. Um, and because we're early in the game, um, I can do that for free. I just keep training them up. So this is kind of one, one of the key things <coughs> that this game does differently. It has a much bigger focus, because of plotline, <coughs> excuse me, on these survivors. So these are all my survivors, we can see all different levels as I leveled them up. There's things that I haven't unlocked yet because I've, I've been playing the game for a, a month or so. Um, obviously much further to go <coughs> in these games. Um, and we can see this each have their own stats, so each have their talents, and as you level them up, um, they can you can unlock more of these talents. <coughs> and they all have different um, kind of classes, so you have snipers and, and defenders and, and uh, kind of uh, gatherers. So, um, I can actually have 12 survivors, so I can go and collect some more. So I can go into the um, the broadcast tower and search for them. So here are just some survivors that are there. You can see they're low level. I can choose, you know, there's random selection. I can choose which ones I want, you know, snipers or de uh, defenders or um, <coughs> whoever. I can see they're, they're at a low level. Interestingly, I can, it says they take everything. I can just kind of like turn them over and take all their resources, use them as a resource, in fact. Um, or I can recruit them if I want to. Um, in that sense, you're kind of using these survivors as a resource, although a more important resource um, than, than just the kind of the salvage and the food. Um, so there we go. We can see Garrick Fuller is added at the bottom. He's a low level, my lowest level character at the moment. Obviously, been leveling, leveling up the others. So that's kind of a nice something that's, that's a bit more permanent about um, how how the game is approaching kind of use of characters which I think really marks it out um, and actually you know you don't massively care about them but you care a little bit more about them than, than if they were totally generic like archers or cavalry units that you know just you just kind of create them and then just use them in in, in, in battles and such like so um, 
The other nice thing about it is because it's based on the license, you have the council chambers, and these are a different sort of characters. So these are permanent characters. These are like hero characters. So you can see they're um, <coughs> they are uh, different kind of. They work on different level, um, and they're kind of more powerful. And uh, and that you kind of use them when you have a go and have a raid. You have to take one of these characters there. Again, have talents. You collect uh, these kind of comic covers to to level them up. Um, well, not you can you level them up in a different way, but there's two different leveling systems. You can trade them as well. But we can see there's all these other characters. So these are the more iconic characters from the Walking Dead series. Um, and so that's a good re kind of um, retention that you want to maybe, or maybe you do, maybe you don't. I'm not a big Walking Dead fan, so uh, maybe I care less about these things. But, you know, clearly some some of those big characters are big names, so you want to kind of maybe unlock them. So you have this nice balance. You have these, these council characters that you really want. Um, <clears throat> and then you have these survivors. I'm going to upgrade my broadcast tower here. So as typically in this 4X game, I have one uh, builder at a time. I can actually go and buy another builder if I want to, um, to do two things at a time. Um, but it's quite expensive. I haven't spent any money in this game, I should say. Um, there's a research, so research tree. This is very typical in 4X games. You have these research trees. And how how do you speed things up? You don't use hard currency. You use these speed up items. So it's going to take me 11 minutes. So I can use maybe a 10 minute speed up, which I have two of and one of now. And now I can use a five minute speed up because I need to speed it up for a minute. So there we go. Everything I do, I get rewards for. So there's that kind of like um, kind of loop reward kind of situation. And now I just go off and do some more research. So we can see very typical loops as you have from a 4X game, but in terms of, I think, deeper narrative and um, <coughs> deeper characterization, which certainly for me, I found a lot of 4X games um, a little bit um, dull. Obviously, not obviously, perhaps, but um, that's a lot to do with community. I'm not in a, in a guild here. We'll go into that in a minute. So daily objectives. Um, so that's obviously most free-to-play games would have this to get you, you know, what should I be doing in the game? Um, in this case, um, I need to clear some walkers, complete 10 missions or 6 supply run missions or send a raiding party to scavenge salvage, so all those things will give me um, that daily reward. So here we go, it's a little um, narrative thing here. Some of these are quite lightweight, it's kind of hard to know exactly, you basically have two choices. Um, <laughs> I don't really know how this feeds in to, to the plot, maybe I'm not deep enough into it yet. This is a quite a, um, a lightweight one, some of them are a bit more... Um, feel like morally a bit more kind of a uh, loaded um, but anyway we do that and I'll claim our reward and then we have these so that's a little upgrade research annex to level six so that's not like a daily mission that's just a, you always have one of these kind of kind of um kind of priority missions I guess something always telling you what to be doing um, I can't do that at the moment because I'm, I'm, I'm using uh, I'm uh, researching something so back to the environment environment map. Let's quickly show you how to do um, go and scavenge something. So I send a raid. I get to choose one of my council uh, members. I don't have many survivors because they're all training or being healed. But anyway, um, that's what I've got. So I select those uh, to go and get that uh, to go and salvage. Get that salvage. You can see a little green arrow there, um, and that will take a bit of time. Again, everything in this game is based around time. If you want to, you can speed things up. But um, basically just let things go. So there we go. I sent a raiding party to collect salvage. So I get my reward in my daily reward kind of achievement list. I've done two of nine today. So we can see what else is going on there. So the game's kind of starting to populate, li populate a little bit, as I say. Um, not out globally yet. And my headquarters. So uh, people can attack me. I can attack other people. So I have to make sure my fortifications uh, don't reach zero. Um, basically this is select another kind of player I can go and scout them and see obviously this is level one player so I could probably if I had everyone um, fit I could take them quite easily and this is the community stuff so this is the guild guilds are very important in this type of game I've not joined one yet um, so uh, I will at some point join one but I'll probably wait till the game goes live before I do that to see um, how that pans out but that's another whole kind of part of the meta game which I've not experienced yet but so even even without that so far I'm enjoying it in a way that I haven't enjoyed other 4X games and as I say I'm not not a Walking Dead fan uh, to any degree really um, so it is just basically based on based on the gameplay I'm finding this quite a enjoyable and you know fairly compelling experience so I've unlocked so Mike is leveled up to level 10 and now we've unlocked a talent so he has two different options I don't really know if which one I want to do so it's fairly random kind of um, choice there but we can see you can see there you know 
you're kind of getting engaged with these characters now, even though he's a generic character, I've now kind of unlocked something and made a choice and all that kind of stuff deepens the psychological kind of attraction of the of the, these characters, which makes me then, of course, come back to the game. So I think they're doing a good job here, Disruptor Beam, um, experienced in making this kind of game, so maybe no surprise there. But anyway, it was definitely be playing uh, the Walking Dead March to War uh, more. So don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube um, to make sure you're up to date with the videos we're doing. We just do videos about free-to-play mobile games. That's what we do. That's what we like to do. Um, what we enjoy doing. So subscribe. You can also get us on Twitter, as you can see below, um, at the long view, spelt uh, long, spelt double O. And also we have a Patreon now as well, so you can check out our Patreon, get some rewards from uh, $1 a month. So uh, that's all good stuff. But thanks for watching the video, and hope to see you again soon. Hello, and thanks for watching to the very end of the video. If you have any comments, please put them in the comments box. We love to read your comments. And if you haven't subscribed already, the subscribe button is below. And don't forget to check out some of our other videos. There's two really good examples on the screen right now.